Is yours on? Right, it's not on. It's about to loom it. I got to turn it on. Oh, there, there we go. go. Now we're cooking. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Hello. Bonjour tout le monde. Oh. C'est pourri, hein? Encore une fois. Bonjour tout le monde. There we go. Merci. All right. Um, Hello. Matt. How are you? <sighs> Wait, before we get started, we've only got 44 minutes and 27 seconds left with each other. That's not a lot of time. I don't want to waste time, but we do need to take care of something very important. So if you will all just patiente, just un peu, you know, I'm going to take a photo with him. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, you ready? Nope. Okay, when I say fromage, <laughs> you all smile and pretend like you are happy, okay? Okay. <laughs> Un, deux, fromage. Oh, money, good stuff. Right on, thank you. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. Appreciate that. So, how many people like spring? How many people prefer Java EE? There's those two guys. You see them? They like raise their hands really quick. Are you using Emacs <laughs> for those two people? How many people like TypeScript? What about JavaScript? Not as many hands, what? right? It's always Wait like a one I side and then the other side. Is anyone using Angular? Angular 2? What about Angular 4? Yeah, All right, we got like four Angular people. Angular 3 is so last week. Right, it's so, it never existed, actually. Yeah, it's so, <laughs> Angular 2 is so last week. Right, is anyone writing progressive web apps? Not yet. All right, they're going to today, right? right here. That's awesome. Um, is there anyone here for a particular reason? Uh, me? To see Josh, right? No, I, Raise I'm your hand. I'm here to see, see him. Josh. <laughs> I, who's here to see my friend, Mon Inspiraso, Moneo, Matt Rabel? We got two. No, look at that. <laughs> there we go. That's pretty good. We did okay. Right, right. right. So my name is Matt Rabel. I grew up in the backwoods of Montana with no electricity, no running water for 16 years, and I had to walk two miles to the bus stop every day, and it was uphill both, both ways. Both ways. Both ways. So it was hard. And uh, we used to have to, like, start the fire to warm up the monitor to play on the Commodore 64 on And that was before Scala, server. too. Right. That was before you could, you know, compile. And just it was in the 80s. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. So I work for a company called Okta. Next slide. Yes, sir. There's the, the place I grew up. Next. Yes, sir. <laughs> Next. Yes, sir. I'm not allowed to talk about it, about Okta. But I'm allowed to talk about their API. So we do a bunch of authentication standards, um, OAuth 2, OpenID Connect, SAML. If you're using any of those, if you're using them with Spring Boot, you can read a couple of blog posts that I put on the developer blog. Who just great. loves SAML and wakes up every day excited about it? We nobody, got one. Right? We no, got one. No, nobody cares. That's why you should use Okta, right? <laughs> right. You don't want to care about that stuff. You don't want to care about it at all. Let's Spring security, here. configure five lines, you're done. Done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Hi. Uh, my name is Josh Long. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Spring developer advocate on the Spring team. I've worked on the Spring team for now seven years. I'm an open source engineer and contributor. Uh, I've worked in um, a lot of different open source projects, some of which you may know. I am the number one. Now, for seven years, seven years, I have had the distinction of being the largest and most prolific and most visible contributor of bugs to, uh, <laughs> to projects like Spring Boot, Spring Cloud, Spring Batch, Spring Integration, more bugs per line of code than, than every other developer on the Spring team, right? I also work, ah, uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you, yeah, thank you. I, I didn't fix them. I, I created them. <laughs> I think you misunderstood. <laughs> um, uh, I also do training videos and I do books. And so right now I'm working on my fifth book. So close. So and I said the same thing, you know, the last year. But I mean it this time. And the year before. Uh, shut up. It was it the same book? It was the same book. But, <laughs> the, but this is like weeks away now. So uh, well, from it being done from my side, right? Uh, the the book is called Cloud Native Java, and on the cover is a bird. And I'll let, I can see in your eyes, I can see it in your eyes, you are wondering what kind of bird, because anybody knows, anybody who knows about O'Reilly, they know that the book, it doesn't even matter what the book is about. The bird, the animal, is the most important thing. <laughs> it's the reason why the book succeeds or fails. And so this, this book has a great animal. This animal is a blue-eared K-1 
kingfisher. It's a bird that's indigenous or native to the Indonesian Java Islands. Ah. <laughs> it's a bird that is unique or native to that region. Now, birds, they fly, often in the clouds. So it's a bird that is native to Java, and it's in the clouds. It's a cloud-native Java bird. A bird, <laughs> ne never mind. <laughs> I'm, I, think, I think you understand how amazing this book is going to be. I mean, <laughs> the rest, who cares? But that cover, man. Uh, and I work at Pivotal. And uh, we, we bring a lot of open source projects. Uh, we care about a lot of open source, just like Matt and Okta does. One of which is uh, Spring. And one of the things that we care about, very much like Matt and uh, what he's doing, is we care about helping people build resilient, robust systems. Right. Right. Just yep. by the show of hands, how many of you know Spring? OK. Whew. How many of you know Spring Boot? Mm. How many of you know Apache Tomcat? Apache Tomcat, OK. What about RabbitMQ? Okay, so yeah, you know some of our stuff. We care about building robust systems, and we care about building systems that work well uh, in distribution. We care about people helping people move systems from idea all the way to production. And a lot of times they struggle with this because they have these large existing applications. They want to decompose them. They want to make them smaller and easier to manage, easier for small teams to work on. And so they decompose their large applications into small, small systems, small microservices, right? And uh, then they want to create, you know, they have to create these different kinds of clients as well. Lots of clients that are talking to it, iPhones, Androids, HTML5 devices, etc. cetera. Uh, and so the question, you know, it becomes, very it becomes very difficult for these teams that have moved to this architecture to optimize for organizations. It becomes very difficult for them to build systems that work correctly when there are failures. And there are going to be failures everywhere, right? The, the internet is full of reasons for you to fail. Very few, very and full few of failures. Yeah, and Just full of failures. People. Just people. Exactly. <laughs> so the, the the thing that people struggle with is how do I build a system that is robust when there are failures, right? We've all run into the fallacies of distribution, right? The fallacies of network uh, networks and computing, right? Which are listed here. How many of you have seen this list before in some form? Okay. Yeah. These are things that people assume about building systems that just aren't true, right? The network is reliable. Latency is zero. Bandwidth is infinite. There's one administrator, right? It's free to call to call a service over the network. It doesn't cost anything, right? These are all lies, <sighs> fake news. <laughs> um, so people run into this, right? Yeah. Now, what we want to build today, what we're going to do to talk about, you know, we have a two-part thing here. So we're going to present today, right now. Uh, uh, we're going to look at how to build a back-end system that is robust and that does the right thing. Uh, and then we'll build a front-end front -end client thing. that does something similar. And allows you to actually work offline. That's the whole progressive web app thing. So, um, progressive systems and progressive clients, really. And it's it's a new style of development that I've learned over the last five years. In the sense that we always code for the happy path, and we're kind of coding for the sad path here, right. where we're path. expecting errors, right? And we expect failures. We expect the network to fail, and uh, and show you that this stuff can still work. Yeah. So, what should we? Uh, what's next, man? So I think we should code some sort of service around. Something beer. important. Beer. Like beer. That was just on your mind or? Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost that time. It is that time. So where should we begin, Matt? I think we should write a microservice architecture that actually takes a list of beers from you guys. And then we actually take out the ones we don't like and make like a good beers sort of service. Yes. So a back end and an and a edge service, right? Right. So I want to build a new application. How should we build that new application, Matt? Well, you know okay. one of your favorite places on the internet. My, my second favorite place on the internet, <laughs> after production, right? <laughs> and so anybody who knows me knows that I care about production more than anywhere else in the world, more than anything else in the world. If you have not gone to production, you should go. It's <laughs> wonderful. It's almost as beautiful as Paris, you know? The weather is amazing. The people are friendly. It's the happiest place on earth. It's better than Disneyland. But if you are not already in production, then begin your journey here at start.spring.io. If you need inspiration in the early mornings before a cup of tea or coffee, start.spring.io. <laughs> if your children can't sleep, start. 
that spring that I owe. And if you suffer from heartburn or indigestion after a long night of alcohol abuse and PHP, <laughs> start that spring that I owe. So we're going to build a new, a new service, a new application. What kind of, so we don't call it what? Like a beer catalog okay. service. A beer catalog service. And we're going to use, uh, it's going to be a web service, right? We're going to have to. You got to make a, a bad choice too. Yeah, bad web application. We need to store the data. Yep. So I'm going to use uh, H2. I love H2. How many of you use H2 for prototyping, that kind of thing? I love H2. It's an in-memory, embedded SQL database. And because it's in memory and it's embedded, that means that every single time it restarts, it loses all of its data. So it's very, it's, it's very similar to MongoDB, very similar uh, in that way. Um, all the time, just randomly losing the data. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use JPA to, to handle the persistence because I make bad life decisions, so JPA. I'll bring an actuator for operational concerns. I, wanna, I think we're going to need to be able to find this thing from our edge service, right? So right. we'll need uh, service registration discovery. I'll bring in the Eureka client. You, you probably want dev tools. Those are awesome. Dev tools, yes. Dev yeah. tools for live reloading. Lombok is a compile time annotation processor. I'm using Java, but you can use uh, whatever you want, right? There's a lot of different choices. Anything on the, any language on the JVM that supports annotations and objects will work just fine. So Scala, uh, Kotlin. Uh, Ceylon, Groovy, Java, anything you want, in any order, it doesn't matter. Um, what else do we need, my friend? Rest repository support? Yep. Okay. Am I missing something? Probably. Okay, we'll move can on. add it later. So obviously there are lots of other cho choices, and I encourage you to peruse this list at your own discretion later, when you have time, you know. But for our purposes, I think it's fine. Let's hit generate, uh, and uh, we'll put, create a new application. I'm going to open up this application, my IDE. It doesn't really matter which. I am struggling here, my friends, as I've just switched machines. Oops, that's not what we want. So I've just switched machines, and my keyboard foo is not as strong as it was because I'm struggling on Linux for the first time in seven years. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete everything here. I, no, I know. I was worried, too. Uh, Nautilus. OK. Delete. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, OK. Generate again, and we go to our console here. Unzip, uh, beer catalog service. Might want to bump up your font. Thank you. Yep. Idea, beer catalog service, palm.xml. We're gonna open this up in our IDE, and it doesn't really matter which IDE you're using. As I always tell people that, uh, you know, I use this because it's just it works. But you can use any Eclipse distribution in the last seven years. You can use. Uh, you can use NetBeans. That works great as well. How many of you are using NetBeans? I'm just curious. NetBeans. There's that guy. O2. Uh, what, two about, what about Emacs? Emacs? <laughs> Anybody? I've become the Emacs guy. <laughs> I wrote my book in Emacs. So now I feel bad because I always make fun of the people who are using Emacs. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so I've got a beer catalog service. And uh, what are we going to do? We're going to have an entity, right? Can you see that font in the back? Is that large enough in the back? It's OK? OK, thank you. Bigger? No. OK, thank you. So we're going to create a, an entity to store the data. I'm going to call it a, a beer. And uh, it's going to be a JPA entity. So we'll say at entity. Uh, we need a private ID, a private primary key. So we'll say at ID and at generated value. And again, I don't want to spend too much time writing this code. I just want to have something to work with. Then we're going to say private string uh, name, right? That's the uh, the name of the beer, and that's it, right? That's the essence of what we need. But right. but if this is Java, right? So there's a lot of stuff you have to do as well, like the constructor and the the getters and setters. So there's that, and uh, we need uh, also the the uh, JPA constructor, just this one right here, right? So pourquoi JPA? <laughs> Right, there's that one. So all this noise, really, right? And I, I don't want to have to waste time on all this. So I'm going to have a two string. Now, that's a lot of noise. I don't really care about that. So instead, I just use Lombok these days. You know, I say at data, at all args constructor, at no args constructor, at two string. You can tell he's a spring guy, right, with all yeah. the annotations? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. This is, this is for, for JPA, OK? But it's still much simpler than before, right? Um, and now we want to save some data in the database. So I'm going to create a beer repository, which uh, is really my, that's my name, my code name for his 
stomach, <laughs> right? Beer repository is a JPA repository, and we're going to manage beers. Mm, beers. And uh, th then we need to save some data in the database, right? So I'm going to create a, uh, an object inside of Spring Boot called a command line runner. So I'm going to say beer initializer implements command line runner. And this is an object that gets called when the application starts up. There's a, uh, a run method that Spring will call when the application starts up, passing in the public static void main arguments. So I can say that I want to uh, inject the beer repository here as well, like this. And then I say that uh, I want it as part of the constructor. Right? And what I want to do is I want to write some records to the database. So we're going to write some names, some beers. I know, uh, very, uh, you know, I know of a few beers. Here. We know of Cronenberg, right? There's this one. Right, uh, what else we got? Budweiser. Oh, that's, no. But we, we got to filter some out though, okay, right? So we'll do Budweiser. We got to have some bad ones. Yeah. Have a good we, beer service. It just, we don't have to, they're not, I guess they don't have to be good. Right. They don't even have to technically be legally beer. They just have to be things that people think are beer. Right. Like Budweiser, right? <laughs> right. Legally, not really, right? Um, <laughs> what about, what else? Who, who can give me some suggestions? Yeah. What? Yeah. Leffen? What? Okay. L E F F E N? No, no N. Left, okay, yep. very good. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Rochefort. How do you spell it? I think it's R O C H F O R T. Like this? Without the, okay, like that? And before. Before? Yeah. Or, okay, Rochefort. There okay. we go. Very good. Heineken? Okay. Barely. Like that? Is that right? <laughs> Roughly? What else we got? Duvo. Duvo, yeah, that's a good one. Right there. What is that? How do you spell that? Oh, Brooklyn. L-A-G-E-R. Like that? Yep. Very cool. What? No. Whoops. What else we got? Any other names? You know. Carbonit? Carbonit? Hello, T. Carmelat? <laughs> Camelot? R E T? Like that? Oi! K, K for the first one. What is it? K. Okay, <laughs> 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 oh. no more. No more. <laughs> oh. We're done. We can go now. It's been enough. Uh, so now we're going to say for each beer, we're going to write the records to the database. So we're going to say beer repository that save new beer. And I need to create a constructor that can take just the beer name, right? So uh, I need to actually go back to my entity here and uh, create a new constructor to accommodate exactly what we've just done. So there we are. There's my one little constructor that is uh, not automatically generated for me. Uh, and then I can confirm that everything is working by saying beer repository that find all. And I'm just going to print out that everything is here, OK? OK, so that, I think, is enough, <coughs> right? We should run it, probably see what's, what's happening here. So. Let's see if that works. I'm going to go ahead and compile and run. Drink some water. It's a PT. We don't have the uh, beer. OK, <laughs> so there we go. OK, there's our, our, our beers. That seems to be working. Now what? We need a REST API, I guess, huh? Right, so some we need some kay. sort of edge service and some sort registration. Of well, we need, a, we need a service here first to show off that data. We also have some funny stuff in the PDF. We should we go back to that. Oh, we need the PDF in uh, this directory, which is in the, wow, that guy is sick, like <laughs> me, my cold. And this is the Java, he is sick, yes, this is so awkward. <laughs> oh, my God, Denver, Whew. this one? Yep. Okay. Imagine if this was already done. Okay, so F5. F5. Oh, function F5. Thank you. 
I accidentally closed it because I'm used to closing things uh, as I can as soon as possible. I'm getting used to this new world of uh, Linux again. And apparently PDFs are a hard thing. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Go, go, go. Faster. Nope, we broke it. Nope, oh, that's it. There. Oh. oh, so, oh, no. <laughs> so awkward. <laughs> These are supposed to be well-timed at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay. F F5. Maybe we should go back to coding. Wait, actually, we can switch to yours. <laughs> wait, wait, what is it? The uh, four? Yep. You got, you got it live? I think so, right? So. So, thank God. What should we build? A beer service. Right. Why should we build it? Homer likes beer. Because beer is the cause and, and the, solution the solution of most problems. To all problems. <laughs> right. And it's also a really good aid in helping you program. Right. I just We, we need to lay down the groundwork so this cartoon explains it. Please take a moment to read and appreciate the scientific reasoning behind alcohol. I love this line. However, it's a delicate effect requiring careful calibration. You can't just give a team of coders a year's supply of whiskey and tell them to get cracking. Has that ever happened? Remember Windows Me? <laughs> <laughs> Great line. Yes. Okay, back to so, coding. So now we need to build a service on s monitor three. Back over here, that was a sad detour. Okay, so we've got a we need to build a REST API to share our beer with the world. So I'm gonna build a REST controller. This is the hard way that we could do it. Bless you, Gazoon, that's this way. So we could say, uh, we want a beer REST controller. We're gonna say at REST controller, at get mapping. And this is the hard way to do it, right? I could say public collection of beer, beers, and I just return all the beers that we have from the beer repository, which is a, my name for Matt's tummy. And uh, there we go, beer repository dot find all, right? That, that would work, I guess, but that's a lot of code. That's a lot of stupid code that I don't want to write, because all I'm trying to do is to expose the data in my repository to, it, to the outside world as a REST API. And if you recall, in my build here, I've got uh, spring boot starter data REST here which means that I can just go back to my code and I can say at repository rest resource, okay, and I can, uh, that'll give it, that'll give me what I want. It'll expose my spring data repository as a rest endpoint. And now I should be able to just reload instead of restarting the application. So there's that. And now we go here, localhost 8080 forward slash beers. Oh, sweet beer, right? So there's our, there's our new rest endpoint. This endpoint has hypermedia. These are links, right? Uh, what we want here is to have all of our beer, but we want to make it as easy as possible in a distributed system for a client to work with the, the data in our REST API without being too coupled to the, uh, to the service itself, right? These links are a implementation of a design pattern called HateOS or HadiOS, right? Hypermedia as the engine of application state. It's the idea that every REST resource has enough information for the client to m use that REST resource without any upfront knowledge. It promotes self-describing services. This is very important when you move to a distributed systems world because very few developers write documentation and none, absolutely zero, read it. So we need to make, it, we need to make it as easy as possible for them to communicate, right? So this does this in two ways. One, it creates the, the contract is now these links, self and beer. The URL, this can change over time. It doesn't matter what this is. This is important, right, this thing here. If the URL changes, that's okay. It's like a menu of choices, right? If I go to forward slash, I have a menu. It says there's a, an endpoint that accepts reservations, right? Like this, page equals one and size equals, oh, uh, beers, page equals one and size equals W, which isn't a number, that two, there we go. So there's my few links there. And these are also contextual. It gives me the state that I need to be able to see what is the right, you know, what is the right resource to call with the current resource, with the current entity, right? I can use this to understand, uh, for example, when it is appropriate to do certain things with this endpoint, with this payload. Uh, for example, I might have a, a beer endpoint that has a, a state check to see if somebody is uh, of, of age, right? Which I think is, what is that legally? Like, I don't know. What is the legal age for drinking here? Oh, 
You have to wait a long time. <laughs> it's the same in the States. It's worse. Anyway. 21. What? 21. Oh, which, by the way, Java is now? 21? Yeah. It's old enough to drink. Java is old enough to drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me happy. Uh, anyway, whatever. So the point is that res these hypermedia APIs give us flexibility. So now we've got a REST API. Right. What else do we need? We need, like, uh, we need resiliency. We need resiliency? We need a client. We need an edge service. We need a good beer service. That's what yeah. I want. Yeah, because he he's not happy with this. This has everything, right? It has, it's got all the data in the database. But I think we want to build an, an endpoint that serves just this client, just his progressive web app, which we're going to build soon, right? We want to have an endpoint that provides just a filtered view of the data, right? Here, I've got a microservice, but this microservice is built just for the purpose of being a microservice. It's not built to be used with a particular client. There are lots of different kinds of clients out there, right? Uh, there's, there's things like iPhones, and there's Playstations, and uh, Androids, and Xboxes, and, you know, smart TVs, and, uh, you know, whatever. If you go to Singapore, the roads, the streets in Singapore have IP addresses. They feed sensor data into the cloud. They are clients to somebody's service, right? There are human beings with organs that are connected to the internet. So they are clients that are connected to somebody else's microservices, right? Almost everything these days has an IP address. So we need to build a, an edge service, something specific for his, uh, his application and that serves his particular application's need. This is uh, because different clients have different requirements. Some need some different kinds of data. Some want uh, you know, to, to be able to uh, get a, a composition or a synthesis of different endpoints. Uh, some have security requirements. And if you're doing, if you're doing security, uh, then, of course, at the edge, the best thing for that would be to use, to use Okta in the edge service. In the cloud, Wink. Huh? Wink. <laughs> TM. Branding. <laughs> so, okay. Ça, c'est juste de la, la notoriété de, de la marque, okay? I'm trying to help the brand. Anyway. <laughs> um, so anyway, you have to have these things in the edge service, right? Um, and uh, so what we need to do we need is we need to build an edge service. But in order to build an edge service, we need to make it easy for that edge service to find this application. These things are going to be in a cloud environment. There may be one or more instances of this service. And I don't want it to be so fragile that if this service falls down, the edge service can't communicate with it. I want to decouple the edge service from that actual service. Can't you just use DNS? DNS isn't a great fit, right? In a cloud environment in particular, for intra-service communication, DNS isn't a great fit. Uh, it, it, it has several problems, the biggest of which is, of course, it doesn't have the ability to answer interesting questions about the system itself. For example, I can ask, where does that service live? But I can't ask, is the service alive, right? Which is, to, to, to use a very scary analogy, you know? I know, or Matt knows where I live, but he doesn't know if I'm dead. You know, it's different. You need to be able to ask the question, is the service there? He doesn't want to fly all the way to San Francisco and knock on my door and know that I'm, and, and knock on my door waiting for a reply if I'm not there. So it's such a sad story. I know. Well, we, <laughs> it's only going to get better. <laughs> right. It's only going to get better. Bring him down before you bring yeah, him up. bring him up with beer, you know? <laughs> so we need to build an edge service. So I'm going to use uh, a registry, a service registry to make it easy for, for one service to find another. And I can use that. I can do that here. I can say, uh, Eureka hyphen service. I'll use the Eureka server and I'm going to hit generate. Now, that'll give me a new zip file here uh, in downloads. Downloads. Okay. Uh, Eureka extract, alt extract files. Goody, goody, closed. Eureka palm control O. Wait for it. Oh, control O. There we are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the application properties. I'm going to spe specify that this is going to run on this port 8761. And I'm going to tell it to not register with itself uh, in this case. And then I need to, you know, I need to change the application code itself. So, um, oops, Eureka hyphen service application. There we go. And the point here, the, the benefit of having a service registry, and there are many different service registries that are well supported by Spring Cloud. Spring, Cl Spring Cloud uh, supports, you know, HashiCorp console. It supports uh, talking to Apache Zookeeper. It supports ha st talking to, uh, to Cloud Foundry. It supports talking to all sorts of different things. But the benefit of, what is that? I can't recall. Oh, yeah, fine. It's trying to talk to itself. It's not good. So w it is now running. The benefit of, of using a service registry is that we can decouple <laughs> 
the application and we can ask it more interesting questions uh, and, uh, and so on. And so Spring Cloud supports a lot of different implementations. But I like Eureka for two reasons. One, it's very, very useful, very easy, very convenient. And it's also been used by one of the largest websites on the planet, Netflix, right? So we know it works. It'll probably do good enough for you. The, uh, the nice thing for me is that it's very easy to set up, right? I just have it here. So what we need to do now is to connect our edge service. We need to connect our, our beer service to this endpoint here. So we go back to our beer catalog service. And I've got on the class path here in the code, I've got uh, Spring Cloud Starter Eureka. That's the, the uh, client that talks to the service registry. And I'll say at enable discovery client. And I'll restart this application. OK. You got to give it a name, right? Oh, yes, I do. Thank you, Matt. OK, application.properties, spring application name is equal to beer catalog service. And we'll restart that again. And if we go here, come on, there we are. So there's our service in the registry. It's now available. It's advertising itself for other people to find. And that's good, because now we can build our edge service. right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build an edge service uh, called what? The edge service, I guess? Or PWA, maybe? OK, edge service, that's since we're doing better. Back ends for front ends. Yes. Um, or Sophia, which I liked from eight right. years ago, nine years service ago. Service-oriented front end architecture. Yeah. Web. It's too early for its time. Oh, pour mm. one out. Okay. Um, so we have, what do we need? We need web. We need Zool. We need Fane. K Eureka. We need Fane. We need uh, REST repository support, Lombok support. Eh? That's probably enough. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Good. So now we're going to build an edge service, and I'm just going to stand up an endpoint <laughs> that we can use, uh, you know, to, to, um, interrogate our beer, okay, and it's here, okay, uh, PWA edge service, palm, open, all right, so PWA edge service application, we're going to participate in uh, service registration and discovery, we're going to tell our application that it should talk to the Eureka registry, and we're going to say that it should identify itself as uh, edge hyphen service. I think that's okay. What about you? Yep, that's fine. Okay, uh, we're going to say that it's going to uh, talk to the downstream service. We want to, we can do this a couple of different ways, right? We want we want to talk to the downstream service and make it available to talk to our uh, to our, to talk to our client here. And there's lots of different types of clients, lots of different capabilities. Uh, we're talking to an HTML5 browser-based application, right? Right. Uh, so one thing I want to support is is um, uh, REST, of course, and I, I think we're going to also need to talk about how to talk to it from another node. Is that true? Right. Should we do that now or later? Is that later? I think that's, you can talk about that when we get to it later. But for now, we need, a, uh, we need to build an S point, a REST endpoint that synthesizes our data. I could, we could proxy the data directly from the downstream service. We could proxy it directly from our, our beta catalog to this edge service, which is specific for his HTML5 <laughs> client. Uh, but what I want to do is instead call the downstream service and then transform it instead of just proxying it back and forth. Right, right, because I want a good beers right. service. Right, he wants a, uh, an endpoint that shows me just the good beers, not the bad ones, not all those ones that are questionable. Right, so instead of directly proxying the results back and forth using something like Zool, we're going to create uh, a an endpoint, an API adapter. Right, so I'm going to say beer or good beer API adapter REST controller. <gasps> okay, I'm going to call this a REST controller, and it'll ha we'll have an endpoint here that just returns. Uh, the, I guess JSON. I get a bunch of JSON structures. Just, just the names. Names okay, good so enough. Yep. Collection of map of string. Uh, string. Okay. And we want to call this. Um, what do we want to call this? Uh, good beers. Okay. And this is going to be an endpoint that will expose over Spring as REST. So we're going to call this good beers. And this is going to run on a different port, right? It's not going to be the same port as our other one. So we're going to say. Server.port equals 8081. And uh, what we need to do now is call the other service. We need to say to the service registry, give me all of the instances of the beer catalog service. So I could do this a few ways. I could use the F Spring Framework REST template. And the REST template has the ability to call other services, but it does not know about our service registry. It doesn't know about Eureka, right? It doesn't know about HashiCorp console or Apache Zookeeper or whatever. Spring provides this discovery client. And the discovery client, we can use that if we want to, to, to call or to, act, to interact with our registry. 
So I can build a REST template like this. I can say REST template. But this will only work with DNS. It doesn't work with service registries and so on, unless I say at load balanced, right? And that would be, I think, OK. But that's a, I would end up writing a lot of very low-level code, right? I don't want to have uh, too much low-level code. What I want to do is I want to build a client to talk to our uh, service. I want to build a client to talk to the, uh, the, other, uh, the actual service, the beer catalog service, <laughs> without uh, too much code. I don't want to waste too much time there. I'm gonna, I want to build a, a beer uh, client, which is, I think, what we, uh, we can agree is, <laughs> is him, right? He's a, he's a beer client. So, client. so we're going we're gonna to build a beer client, and we're going to use a technology here called Fane. Now, Fane, uh, in English, <coughs> Fane means to pretend, right? Here's Fane right here. Fane means to pretend or to act as, right? So if you see like an animal in the forest with its head back like this, it's pretending to be dead. It's not dead. Don't worry. It's pretending because it doesn't want you to bother it. It's scared. It's feigning death in the same way that WebSphere feigns usefulness. It, <laughs> it, it's, not, it's not useful. <laughs> it's not, but it's pretending, right? So we want to use Fain to create a REST client to talk to our downstream service. Uh, and we want to make this as easy as possible. So we can go here to our code, and we say, at enable Fain client, OK? And so here I say, interface beer client. And I'm going to create an endpoint, an enter endpoint declaratively. So I'm going to say, Call the beer catalog service. Whenever, whenever somebody invokes an, in, uh, an instance of this service, Spring uh, will create a, an implementation, so we don't actually have to, uh, to, to create all the low-level REST code. And I need to return the JSON back and turn it into types of beer. So class beer will have a, a local DTO, right? So there's this. And I'll use Lumbach again just to say I want a, a, a getter and a setter. And that's a, a collection of beer. So I'm going to say lire et bière. Right? Okay. There's that. And we're going to say that we want Spring to make an HTTP GET call to the uh, beers endpoint on the beer catalog service right there. So now I can inject this code. I don't need this REST template anymore. I can say private final beer client. And uh, we'll add that there. And that'll get injected into the, con the component by Spring. And we can say return beer client dot lire le beer. And what I want to do is I want to, I want to, I don't want to return everything directly. I want to process it and only keep the good ones, <coughs> or at least not the terrible ones. I want to get right. rid of the terrible, terrible ones, right? So we're going to say, uh, get the content, that's the beers, stream over it, <coughs> and then we're going to say filter beer, right? Uh, and we'll say beer dot get name dot equals, ignore case. I'm going to say only if it doesn't equal <coughs> uh, Budweiser, right? I mean, if it does not equal this, then then we're okay. It, we can keep it. We know that's probably the worst, <laughs> right? Is that true or no? Is there something worse? Really? Which one? Did we? Is it up there? Okay. Oh, we're fine. You. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, tell tell us later so we never ever drink it. You know? <laughs> oh my God. Uh, so okay, Budweiser. And then we're going to say uh, that we want to take each one of the records that comes back and, um, and return it. Actually, we can just return the collections, couldn't we? Right. We, can, we don't even have to map it. So let's change this code here to a bunch of beers. OK, so collection of beer. And then collect it into a list. Collectors.toList, et voila. OK, so there's our, our endpoint. And I'm going to go ahead and run this now. <coughs> Let's see if that works, OK? Localhost 8081 good beers. No Budweiser? No Budweiser. Thank <laughs> goodness. Now, so far, so far I've, uh, I've kind of ignored some of the robustness that we need to. What to happens when there is no beer? Yeah, that's a big problem, isn't it? I mean, we've got to be careful if we call that service and there's no beer. Is it still Happy Friday if there's no beer? It's not. 
It's not Happy Friday if there's no beer. There's, no there's a beer lot of reasons. Makes Homer angry. Beer makes Homer very angry. We need to have beer. Beer, the lack of beer is a problem that even affects cartoon characters. Even the cartoons. Right? We want beer. In, 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 the, in the 1930s, the United States had a very brief period where we made alcohol illegal. The whole country was upset for seven years. <laughs> very upset, just always protesting and sad. Right. There's, a great, there's a great song about the sadness of not having beer, and it reads like this. In heaven there's no beer, that's why we drink it here. And when we're gone from here, our, friends, our friends will be will drinking be all our beer. beer. Right? <laughs> Don't let anybody take away your beer. <laughs> and if there is a call that you need to make to another service, and that service doesn't exist, what happens? No beer. No beer. There's no beer. And then you get a big fat Java stack trace in your iPhone client or your HTML5 client, right? It's the worst of every world, every use case, just the worst. So we need to care about that resilience. We need to build our code to be a little bit more robust when something goes wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a circuit breaker here. I'll say to Spring Cloud to use the uh, Histrix circuit breaker, right? That's this here. Da -da -da. Circuit breaker. Do I already have Histrix? So I'll say Spring Cloud Starter Histrix, and voila. Okay. There's my Histrix circuit breaker. And what I want to do here is I want to say at enable circuit breaker. And I'm going to build a fallback method so that if this fails, if for some reason this throws an exception, it'll call a backup method, a, a fallback method, just to make sure that at least the client does, you know, it doesn't blow up, right? So we'll call this the fallback, right? And I'll say return new array list like this. And um, we're going to tell Spring Cloud to, to call that method when something happens here. So we'll say fallback, right? So now we go ahead and restart. And now we should see that if we call that downstream service, uh, it'll work. Uh, it'll give us a, an empty array list at least. Right, no right? stack trace. No stack trace, right? Because nice. we have a client that needs to be re robust and resilient in the face of that service outages. So let's make sure that still works, of course. Now let's go back and kill the downstream service. So here's the beta catalog service. And we go here and empty array list. Right, so we get we get something now. That circuit breaker is stateful. It's going to be smart enough to see that there have been a lot of exceptions, and if there's too many successive e exceptions, it'll call the fallback method instead of calling the service again. It'll protect our downstream service. That way, if the service is trying to come back online, if you have something like Cloud Foundry, Cloud Foundry will have a heartbeat, and it'll pick it up for you. It'll restore the service. But in the meantime, our code works correctly, right? So this is. Just a very brief look at how to build a, a, an edge service and a back-end service that, are, that do the right thing. They degrade gracefully, right, in the particularly important use case of beer. <laughs> now, in our next talk, in our next talk, we're going to talk about, we're going to take this, uh, we're going to move, it, move the, uh, the, the code now to the front end. And how many of you are old enough to remember when the, the, the front end was simpler than the back end. Well, have we news for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's simple. Yeah. It only takes you like, like a year to learn. Yeah, like, like <laughs> flying a rocket is simple, you know, or <laughs> brain surgery or something. So, um, so yeah, in the next talk, my friend Matt here will brave, he's you know, the most brave and courageous person. He will build an Angular 4 application for you to talk to this, and it will demonstrate principles of building uh, progressive uh, front ends, basically. Right Now, we've looked ever so briefly in this talk at uh, Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. We looked at how to introduce resilience into our code base. Uh, we haven't really addressed too many client-specific concerns. Uh, I think that uh, you know, we can say that for now, though, uh, you know, we, we, we haven't really addressed the use cases of the client. Right? So that's, a, again, I think right, and if a tree falls in the woods and there is no client, did right. the tree really fall? We don't know. We, we don't know. If, we d if, you build, if you build something and there's no client, who's going to use it, right? right? So we need to build a client. Okay. So for now, thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. C'était un vrai plaisir d'avoir l'occasion de vous adresser. Merci d'être venu. Et, et restez pour le, 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 le prochain talk, OK? Ça serait le meilleur, je, je vous assure. Hein? <rire>
Ok, merci beaucoup. Oh, oui.